show you one of the A-level and AS-level biology required practicals, uh, which is to dissect, um, a, well, the mammalian heart. Now, this is actually a sheep's heart, quite an adult sheep, I can see by the size of it. Um, slightly larger than probably a human heart, as, you know, as a, a, an idea, your heart's usually about the size of your fist. Okay, now, when we look at a heart, uh, first thing, if we look at the outside, we can see that a heart is mainly ventricles. It's the ventricles that do the pumping of the blood. So the biggest part of the heart here is the ventricles. Uh, now, on the outside of the heart, and it's easier to see on the model here, we have the coronary arteries, and these are arteries that actually feed the cardiac muscle, the heart muscle. So they actually branch from the aorta and make sure that that heart muscle has got a very good supply of oxygen, of glucose, because it has to carry on beating all of your life, you know, whether you're asleep, whatever you're doing, okay? The coronary arteries are not visible on here, but you can actually see roughly where they would be, okay? Now, uh, the first thing, before we start dissecting, I've said most of the heart is ventricle, but if we have a look at the top here, and often this is missing, if you buy hearts from the supermarket, you don't see this, because they just chop everything off there. Um, but actually, we do have the atria here. So this bit at the top here, this is actually the atria. This, this is one atrium, and at the other side, we've got the other. You can see they've been damaged uh, when this was removed. Um, I'd just like to have a look at the walls of the atria and roughly how thick they are because they're actually quite thin. They actually don't have to create, you know, contract with very much force at all because they're only creating enough pressure to pump blood down into the ventricles. Okay, so that is your atria on the top there. Not much to them really, okay? Now, when you start dissecting, the first thing you have to do is to actually locate the right ventricle. So your ventricles are here, one each side of that kind of line there that runs along the septum. And the way to do this is to poke the heart with your finger, okay? And you should know from your biology lessons that the wall of the left ventricle is much thicker and more muscular than the wall of the right ventricle. So the left ventricle, which is clearly there, when I poke that, it offers a lot of resistance, okay? Whereas the right ventricle here, you can see the wall is much more flexible. It's not as thick. So we're going to make our first cut, and we're actually going to cut parallel to this line here, and we're going to cut up through the wall of the right ventricle. Okay, I'm gonna go right to the top there. Okay, and then right down to the bottom. And I'm going to open out the right ventricle, okay? And the first thing we're going to look at, we've got rather nasty blood clots and things in there. It's not the best heart I've ever seen. First thing we're gonna look at is the thickness of the wall of the right ventricle, okay? So I'd say that's about five millimetres, the muscle wall there, the cardiac muscle thick, okay? The next thing we can do, we can actually look inside the right ventricle. Just let me get rid of that, okay? And I'd like you to, to point out to you this tissue here. Now this almost transparent tissue is actually one of the atrioventricular valves that separates the ventricles from the atria, stops backflow of blood into the atria when the ventricles contract. So can you see it's almost transparent tissue there, but it is very fibrous tissue, it's very strong. These little things here are what's known as the tendinous cords or tendons, and they're kind of like little tent guide ropes that attach the valve tissue to the ventricular wall so that when the ventricles contract, and the pressure increases, those valves cannot be forced upwards because the little tendons become taut and stop them from open, opening in the wrong direction. So that blood can flow down into the ventricles but not back into the atria. So that's our tendinous cords there, known as your heart strings, okay? Because when your heart beats fast, it tugs on those heart strings, okay? So valve tissue, tendinous cords, so they're the AV valves, okay? Now I'm going to go on to the left side before I explore the blood vessels. So we're going to do the same now, and we're going to cut down the wall of the left ventricle. Now the left ventricle, remember, has the job of pumping blood via the aorta all the way around your body. So it has to be able to contract with a great amount of force to create a really high blood pressure. So let's have a look now at the wall of the left ventricle. And I think you can clearly see there, the wall of the left ventricle is more than a centimetre. It's possibly 1.5 centimetres thick in places. 
and this is cardiac muscle. So left ventricle wall, much thicker cardiac muscle because it has to contract with greater force to create a much higher blood pressure to push the blood all the way around the systemic circulatory system. Now, if we look again, we can see the AV valves on the left side. Let me cut a little bit higher up there. Big respect to heart surgeons when I see this. Okay, let's see if we can... I think the valves here are somewhat damaged, so I don't think we're going to see much of those, the valves on this side. Now, if you look up into the top there, you can actually see uh, where the blood vessels are actually leaving the ventricle. So I'm going to use a pencil for this. I've chosen a yellow pencil. Uh, if we actually poke this up to the top here, can you see there? Another one here. Right, we have got two blood vessels here. Okay, this one from the left ventricle, actually there is the, that's part of the atrioventricular valves over my thumb there. If I push the pencil up there, it comes out the top of the heart and that will actually be the aorta. So that's the main blood vessel, the main artery leaving the left ventricle. Okay, if I go back to the right side of the heart now and do the same, I should be able to take the pencil if I get it in the right position. Not easy to do. Okay, and it should actually come out of the pulmonary artery. I'm struggling to get that in there. Okay, but anyway, the pulmonary artery, sorry, yeah, the pulmonary artery there going out to the lungs, can you see, is coming from the right ventricle. Uh, the other two blood vessels we can see at the top here, we've got one leading into the right side of the heart, into the right atrium, but that's actually, most of it is missing. That would be the vena cava. And on the other side, on the left side, of course, we have got the blood vessel coming back from the lungs. My thumb's pretty much in it there. And that would be the pulmonary vein. Okay. Right, now that's about all there is really that you can see in a heart dissection. If you get a very good heart, you can sometimes actually see the semilunar valves up at the top there. But uh, they're proving to be quite, I think they're quite damaged on this particular one. Okay, it's very good if you can actually get hearts, you know, from somebody who actually slaughters their own animals so that they can actually leave them intact for you and leave all the blood vessels. But they are very difficult to get hold of. Okay.